come to worship Him, to come and praise Him, to come and glorify Him. Amen. How many know that? When you're going through a hard time, sometimes it's hard to praise God and worship God, but we need to do that. Amen. Right. We have to begin to worship God. And uh, let's go to Mark chapter 4. Um, I was preaching the kids on this a little bit this morning. But you know, kids, you know. But um, Mark chapter chapter 4, and like I was saying, sometimes it's hard when you're going through the storms, when you're going through the battles in life. It's hard to praise and worship God, amen? It's hard to see God in the midst, amen? And we have to understand that. God is, is, is going to fight our battles. And um, it was found in, uh, put your hand right there. And it was found in Second Chronicles. Um, Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 15. And I got it in a lot of different versions, but I'm going to read it. And I'm going to pray. Father, we thank you for this Bible. Study God, we thank you for your word that brings life and light. We thank you for your word that is alive and sharper than any two other sword going in and out. We thank you for the light, Father, that we walk in the light and not in the darkness. God, we thank you that our eyes are opened to see, Father God, what you want us to see, what you, Father God, what you want, Father God, for us to see. Open our spiritual eyes to see that you're in control, God, and that you are all powerful and you're all loving and you're all. Uh, you do miracles, Father God, in our lives, and we just thank you for your Holy Spirit that's in this place this this night. We thank you for our church. We thank you for our church building. We thank you, God, that we can serve you, God, in 2019, God, that we can love you and honor you and lift up the name of Jesus, the name that is above every name. Father God, we thank you that your name is powerful. We thank you, Father God. That we can use your name in the midst of a storm, God. And we just love you and we just thank you for it in Jesus' precious name. And I think that sometimes in our lives that when we're going through storms, that we, we don't we don't see, we, we can't see. And uh, you can't really physically see when you're going through a storm. Um, you, can't, you can't see clear, amen. You can't see clear at all. Uh, when it's really raining and it's really uh, or really snowing, I remember me and Pastor Vince, we went to go see uh, Roy Del Garza, and I, a Pastor really wanted to go, and I, when I, when I watch, I not only watch, but I see what comes out of his mouth and what he wants and what he, what his desires are. So I try to key on that, Amen. And I don't even know why I'm crying, but um. But he really wanted to go see him, and I really didn't want to go. And I knew it was going to snow. I thought, oh, it's not going to snow, it's not going to snow. And then they say, it's going to snow, and I'm thinking, you know, maybe the weatherman's, you know, wrong, like they're always wrong so most of the time. Amen. But, you know, in that midst of that storm, going through that storm, and when we went, and we were praying, God, let it not snow, let it wait till after, you know, whatever. And it began to snow when uh, Robert and Leona took us to eat. Um, and it started coming down. And then um, we went to church. And after the church service was over, it was just so bad. And I'm thinking, what in the world? So we just we asked Robert and Leona to pray for us. We got on. Uh, somebody handed Pastor Vince a Pentecostal handshake. If you don't know what that means, that somebody handed him some money. And uh, we put that in gas on the way home. We filled up the tank. And, uh, and on the way home, and it, we couldn't see anything. We couldn't, I could not see. And I, you know, Pastor Vince, when we were going through the Walmart line, I guess he was at, you know, all those, those things, um, as you see on TV. Yeah. Well, he, seen, he showed me these glasses, and wow, I should have bought them. But they were $14.97, and they were really powerful. But uh, he was, he was, you know, say, saying that, and, you know, and going through the midst of the storm, you, I couldn't see, and I can't see already, you know, right? And I'm thinking, I don't want glasses, I don't want glasses, but I need them, you know what I mean? 
But I'm like, I don't want them now. I don't want the glasses now. But when you're going through the midst of the storm, the storm that we were going through, it's like you couldn't see nothing. All I could, you put your brights on and you all you see is this, the, the snow. And there was nobody on the road. And I'm thinking, what in the heck were we thinking? <laughs> but when Pastor Vince is, says what he wants to do, I, I try to fulfill it, amen, as much as I can. Because, you know, all he wanted to do was go hear the man of God preach. And I didn't want to be the Debbie Downer that said, no, we can't go, it's going to snow. You know what I mean? Because it wasn't snowing here, but it was snowing in Denver. And by the time we even got to Castle Rock, I mean, it took us hours and Hour of like probably about three and a half, almost four hours just to get home. And we were going like 10, 20 miles, 10, 15, 20 miles an hour just going. And I couldn't see, I couldn't see. And I was like, you know, I went off a little bit and I said, Oh Lord, please help me. But in the midst of a storm, you can't see and you start to get scared and you start to get afraid. Amen. And, and the scripture that I, that I have. And we have to understand that um, in Second Chronicles 20:15, and I'll read it in the Amplified. And it said, "He said, listen carefully, all you people of Judea, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and King Jehoshaphat. The Lord is saying this to you: Be not afraid or dismayed at this great multitude, for the battle is not yours." But it's God's. Amen. And that was the Amplified. And uh, we have to understand when we're going through the battle and you're going and all you can see is the enemy just coming. And this passage, the all you can see is the multitude and the multitudes and multitudes of horses and army people and everything. And it's like but it's just us and it's all the enemies coming after us. And, and I was reading a little bit earlier, it said God uh, to Elisha, he told his servant, because the servant says, he said, I'm going to go up on the mountain. And the servant said, um, I'll go with you. And then, then when the army, the enemy came, the enemy got afraid and said, oh my gosh, we're not going to win this battle. We're not going to get it. And God, and Elisha said, God, open the eyes and open his spiritual eyes. Open the eyes so that he could see. And when God opened his eyes, he seen the chariots all around him. And he was, in, you know, so we have to understand that when we're going through the midst of a storm, that we have to put our eyes on Jesus. Amen? Amen. Uh, let's go to what did I tell somebody? Mark chapter what? Mm -hmm. Mark chapter four. Mark chapter four verses. Does it? Uh, I didn't say verses. Thirty-six. <laughs> Everybody's guessing. They want something. To, I don't have those stats. <laughs> Oh, good Lord. Amen. Mark uh, chapter 4, verse 36. And it reads like this. On the same day when the evening came, he said to them, Let us go over to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. And I'm reading out the Amplified. So leaving the crowd, he took him with him. He took him with them. Just as he was in the boat, and other boats were with them, a fierce windstorm began to blow, and waves were breaking over the boat, so that it was already being swamped. Amen? And like I said, there's, there's things in our lives, and there's storms coming, and we can't see that. And when I was on my way, when we were on our way home from Denver, there was nobody. I couldn't see. I started to get afraid because I was like, gee, it looks like the end of the world. <laughs> and then, well, we were the only Clippers, the, the only Clippers that just said we were going to go to Denver and come back. 
And they said, oh, just stay over the, stay overnight. And I said, no, I, I got responsibilities. I can't stay over. I got to get myself home. And I didn't want to stay. I like, I don't like going to different places. I like my, um, my little territory in my home. But uh, as I was going and we, we were going, you couldn't see anything. You couldn't see another car. You couldn't see anything. All you could see, you couldn't see the, 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 the two, the white strips going to the highway, you know, the, the left where you go, the fast and the slow. You couldn't see that. And I was trying to make a path and it was so hard. And at that time you get so, you get unfocused and you're, you're not focusing on, um, you're trying to focus on the road, and then when you turn your brights on, then you start focusing. Uh, you can see all the white. And I don't know if you guys seen the first storm. That was the first one of the major first storms that came down. And you, all you can see is the white, and you start and you start losing focus. And you said, and you don't focus your eyes on the on the road, and then you start to sway. And and then when the you're going a little bit faster, the road just the water and the snow take you, and the ice. And I slipped a little bit. And the ice, and I was like, oh, please, Lord, help us. And, you know, when you're going through the midst of the storm in your own battles and in your own lives, then you start to lose focus. And then you start to you start to see, you, you start to see the water coming up, just like the disciples. They see the water begin to rise, and they see the windstorms begin to come, and they see these big old waves, and, and they see all this stuff, and we look at all this stuff around us. Instead of looking at Jesus, right. and we take focus off our, our focus off of Jesus, and we put our focus on all these things around us. Oh my gosh, what's going to happen to us? Oh my, my gosh, the water's coming up. You know, you know, Lord, help us. You know, we're we're here, and we take our eyes off of Jesus, and we take our eyes off the one that's going to help us, and the one that's going to calm the storm, and the one that's going to calm the wave. But we don't we don't uh, see that, and it says uh, I wanted to read. Uh, it said sometimes before this this sometimes before the story of Peter walking on the water with Jesus, the disciples were caught in a raging windstorm on the Sea of Galilee. In the in this incident, Jesus was in the boat with them and sleeping. It said, afraid the boat was sinking, they woke Jesus. And I, uh, let's go to verse 37. And it says, a fierce windstorm began to blow, and the waves were breaking over the boat. So it was already being swamped. But Jesus was in the storm. But Jesus was in the storm. Right. And you have to understand, in our own storms in our life, Jesus is in the midst of the storm. He's right, He's right there. He is right there. And we don't understand that sometimes in our lives. And we start to overwhelm ourselves. And we start to be, we start to think, well, how is this going to get done? What is this? How, how is this going to work? And this. And you start to get overwhelmed. And you start to begin to panic. And you start to begin to freak out. And you start to begin to see the water rising as they saw the water rising as they see the waves getting bigger but we have to understand that jesus is in the midst of the storm with us right he's right there with us right and we lose focus and we say well where are you at god where are you at god and god's right there with us and we got to understand he's with us in the midst of the storm right that we can't lose focus well, where are you at, God, now? Why does everybody blame God? I don't understand it. It's not God's fault. It's either our bad decisions or it's the enemy. And we have to understand that the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy, but that God comes to give us life and life more abundantly. But we're in the midst of the storm. Jesus is right there, right there in the midst of the storm with us. So you got to understand that. And it said, uh, it said, but Jesus was in the storm asleep with his head on the sailor's leather cap cushion. It must have been a nice cushion. Yeah. And this is the Amplified. Amen. I got me a new Bible and I'm reading it. And uh, I, I love the Amplified. But it but it said Jesus was right there in the midst of the storm. He was asleep. And it's and it and it said and they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are about to die? 
And I think that we say that too sometimes in our life. God, gee, don't you care about us? God, where are you at? Here I am stinking. Here I am. Go, I, I'm in this storm. Here I am. I can't. I can't see. I don't know. But you have to have faith. Right. You have to trust and totally rely on God in the midst of the storm that you're going through. And I think sometimes we think, we try to, well, uh, well wake up, God. Are you sleeping, God? Can't you see? God knows everything. Right. God knows every single thing that you're going to go through in your whole life. And your whole thing, God knows exactly what you're going to go through. Right. And God is going to give us the strength and he's going to give us the courage to go through what we have to go through. And he ain't going to give us nothing that we can't handle. Right. If if we're going through the storm and we're going through this life and we're going through a storm that we've never gone through, God's going to give us the strength to go through that storm. He's going to help us. He's going to encourage us. So when we're going through the battle, don't lose focus. Right. Don't lose focus on this problem. We, Our God, we, we, we focus on the problem and we put our problem so big that and we put God so little. You can't do that because God is a powerful God. God is a God of power. God can do anything. I was reading it just uh, just a while ago about the axe head that uh, the prophet uh, they they wanted to build a bigger house. They wanted to build a bigger place so that they could uh, do Bible studies and have you know different things in the Old Testament. They wanted to you know to have a bigger place, so they borrowed an axe head. And uh, if God doesn't care, God cares about an accent, don't you think that God cares about us? So they were chopping away, getting wood, and the accent came off. I've done that before. I said, have you guys had an axe that had that was loose and it went, you know, it could have killed somebody, you know? And, you, and you, they were pounding and they were trying to get the wood, and the, the axe head flew into the water, into this big old lake. And the guy said, oh, I borrowed it. I, I don't know what to do, man of God. I don't know what to do. The axe said, it's not mine. I borrowed it and all that. And the man of God said, where, did you, where do you think it landed? And, and he said, uh, hold on, let me see. Let me focus my eyes to see where it landed. So he said, I think it landed like right over there. And, and he said, well, go get it. And the man of God said, Went and he prayed, and the axe head came up flow. What flows? That the axe heads don't flow. Right. It came right back up. If God cares about an axe head, God cares about us. God is all powerful. God, God will never leave. If He said that He's never going to leave us, then He's never going to leave us. Right. So get rid of our stinking thinking, and that He's not there for us when we're in the midst of a storm. He's there. He's right there for us. Right. There. And I said. Uh, I'm reading some of my notes, and it said, after the boat was sinking, they woke Jesus up, who got up and rebuked and calmed the storm. Then he asked them, and then he asked them all, including Peter, do you still have no faith and confidence in me? And that was verse 40. And it said, but Jesus was in the stern asleep with his head on the sailor's leather cushion and they woke him and said teacher don't you care about that we are going to die and he got up and, and sternly rebuked the wind and said to the sea hush be still and the wind died down and I would and I was saying that God has the power over the wind and, and God has the power over the waves Jesus spoke it, said, be calm, quit it, stop it. And, do, and we think we're like the disciples, us as Christians. Do you not understand that I am with you? Do you have, don't you have confidence? That, I mean, are you still over there in your baby faith? Come on now. Right, man. Come on now, get it together. I am God, I got you through the last storm. I'm going to get you through this storm. Yeah. So quit it. Yeah. That's what Jesus is telling me. Yeah. We're going through the midst of the storm, and I'm saying, and 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 I'm saying, God and God saying, just like the disciples, do you not care, God? Do you not care? Do you not really care? But how are we ever going to grow spiritually if we don't go through these trials and tribulations? How are we not going to grow spiritually if we never go through the storms? 
When you're going through the storm, you never make a decision. When you're going through a storm and you can't see, you never make a spiritual storm. You never make a, a decision. You pray and you wait on God. Right. You never make a haste decision. You just pray and you wait. Okay, I'm going through the storm. Oh, that's it. I quit. I'm not going to serve the Lord no more. That's it. I've been serving him 25 years. That's it. I quit. No, you don't do that. You don't never make a decision off that when you're going through the midst of a storm. Because you can't see. You just got to hold on. You just got to ask ask the Lord to help you. God, I, I, I trust you as I'm going through this storm. I can't see. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know how the outcome is going to gonna take place. But all I know is that I'm going through the storm and the weight and the storm is pretty bad and I can't see. I don't, you know, I don't know what to do. Then you don't do nothing. You just pray and you don't go, you don't make a haste decision. Right, man. And if we sit and if we we are like the disciples, and the disciple says, "Do you not care?" Well, then tell God that. Be real with God. You don't think God knows that? You're saying in your mind, in your heart, "Where's God at now?" Hmm? I don't know where God's. God already knows that because He knows what you're thinking. Right. He knows the intent of your heart. Right. So you might as well blurt it out. God, where are you at? Mm -hmm. And then after repent, say, "You're there. I'm just acting crazy." Yeah. I'm just being like the disciples. Do you not care, Jesus, that we're going through the storm? Where are you at, Jesus? Do you not care? How could you be sleeping in the midst of the storm? Because God's got it. Right, man. God's got it. He's in control. He knows what he's doing. I don't. I'm not God. You're not God. So let's not try to play God. God knows what he's doing, and that's all there, there is to it. He knows what he's doing. We're going through a hard time, and God's got this. Right and it said Jesus was asleep, but we woke him up. He, the disciples woke him up, and it says in verse thirty-nine, and he got up and sternly rebuked the wind, and it said, and said to the sea, "Hush, be still," and the wind died down, and as if it had grown weary. And there was at once a great calm, a perfect peacefulness. Jesus said to them, why are you afraid? And we have to ask ourselves, I have to ask myself, why are you afraid? Yeah. Why are you afraid? <coughs> we have to ask ourselves that question if you're going through a storm. If you're not going through a storm, then praise God. But you'll go through a storm and you'll remember this message that the disciples, they said, this is what Jesus said. Do you still have no faith and confidence in me? Verse 40. And they said, later when Jesus walked, uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. And he said, he got up and he said, why are you afraid? Why are we afraid? Do you still have no faith and confidence in me? And that's what we have to ask ourselves. Where's our faith at? Faith comes by what? By hearing and hearing the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Faith comes by hearing God's word. So um, what do you, we have to do? We have to put the word of God as we have to eat the word of God. We have to read the word of God. We have to put the word of God as we sleep, as we wake up. We have to put the word of God. We have to have confidence and know that God has got this, that God is not sleeping in the midst of our storm, that he knows exactly what we're going through, Pastor Vince, right now. He knows it exactly what we're going through, Sister Gina. Right now, he knows exactly what we're going through in our church, in our in our in our in our homes. He's got this. He knows it. All we have to do is have confidence and faith and believe that he's going to do it. That he's going to calm our storm. That he has calmed our storm in the past. Right. Right. That he was faithful in the past and he'll be faithful in the future. Right. That he's got this. That we don't have to get all upset and we don't have to have anxiety or we don't have to worry about this or that. But that he's got it. Because he knows, he holds our future. But I think sometimes we as people, we want to know. We have to know. We have to see it beforehand. And God says, that's not faith. 
You just got to trust in me. Right. You got to have confidence that I have everything under control. And he got mad. Do you still have no faith? That's what God told me. Do you still have no faith, Susan? <laughs> Do you still have no faith? And I'm saying, yeah, God, I got faith. And he says, well, I got this. Well, what's wrong with you? Come on, get it together. Yeah. But, the, but that, that fear, that afraid, that not knowing, that not knowing the outcome. That storm that you're going through, and you have fear because it's like, okay, God, now what? Yeah. <laughs> now we can do. Yep. And God says, I got this. In the midst of the storm, yep. I got this. God is so awesome, and he's so great, amen. And it says, they were filled with great, great fear and said to each other, who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him. Yeah. I don't want to be like the disciples that after all the miracles, signs and wonders, and they still say, and they're still afraid, and they still blame God. God, are you going to let us die? Are you going to let us go through this again? Are you going to do this to us, God? Come on now. And we have to understand that. Amen. It says Jesus rebuked the disciples because they did not they did not hold their peace in the storm. I think it's fair to say that a battle of fear of anxiety was raging in their minds and they did not fight it very well. And I don't want to be like that. I don't want to be in the midst of my storm and all I'm doing is looking at the problem. All I'm doing is complaining and all I'm doing is worrying and all I'm doing is seeing in the natural and I'm not seeing the supernatural. All I'm do doing is seeing the big mountain and I'm not seeing my great God bigger than that mountain. Amen. Amen. And it said, and it, and, and it said, Jesus rebuked the disciples because they did not hold their peace in the storm. And in the storm, I want to have peace. And don't you want to have peace in the midst of the storm? Yeah. I want to have peace in the midst of the storm. Right. I don't want to be with anxiety. I don't want to be afraid. I don't want to be worried about the finances at the church. Or I don't want to be worried about what we're going to do or, how, you know, how we're going to do what we're going to do. And I don't, because I know God's going to do great things and I can't have fear and I can't have doubt and I can't have faith at the same time. It's either one or the other. Right, man. You can't be double-minded because God said that he will not bless a double-minded person in right. any way. And I don't want to be double-minded. Yeah. Right, so sometimes going in the midst of the storm, there was no peace. And I think it's fair to say that the battle of fear of anxiety was raging in their minds, and they did not fight it very well. And when you ha when you worry, you can't sleep right. You're thinking, you're thinking, you're thinking, you're thinking, and that's what I did. I was thinking and thinking, and I'm thinking and I'm thinking and I'm thinking, and I'm like, I gotta stop thinking. I gotta start having faith. I gotta put my hope in God. It's just we're going through a storm. And we might be going through, each and every, and every person might be going through a different storm than what we're going through. Right. And it says, as the rain fell and the winds blew, they were fearful, worried, and upset. And all along, Jesus was sleeping peacefully in the back of the boat. Jesus wasn't worried. Yeah. Jesus wasn't worried. Yeah. We should have been sleeping in the midst of the storm, yeah. riding it like, get... <laughs> Riding it like, uh, what is that, what do you, uh, the, the surfboard, riding the waves. That's what God wants us to do, ride the waves. You see it and say, oh, praise God, this is going to be a good story at the end of this storm. Yeah, amen. <laughs> Come on now. Amen. And it says, uh, he was sleeping peacefully in the back of the boat. They went to him and cried out. Jesus, there's a terrible storm going on. You don't think Jesus knew? Jesus knew. But he wasn't worried. He was snoring. And they probably, he was probably drinking. <coughs> uh, one sheep going over, and then 
another sheep going over. He was probably in a good old, good old sleep. Amen. And it says, there's a terrible storm going on. Don't you care that we are going to perish? Jesus quickly handed the situation, handled, handled the situation. He turned to the terrified disciples and said to them, why are you so fearful? In other words, there is nothing to fear. I am is with you. I am is with you. I am that I am is with you. Yeah. Why are you so fearful, Susan? I am is with you. Why are you why are you looking at the problem and not looking at me? I am is with you. Yeah. And that's found in uh, John 5:58. And it says Jesus is always with us in every situation we face. The believers will who experience God's peace through his son can have peace even in the midst of life's storms. Yeah. And we're all going to have life storms. There's sto storms of life are always going to come. There's always going to be a storm in our lives. But we have to understand that I am is with us. Right, During these times, we do not have to know what God is, go what God is going to do or when he's going to do it. We simply need to know that he is there with us yeah. in the storm of life and that he will take care of everything that concerns us. Remaining, remaining peacefully during trials and difficulty is a powerful, is very powerful. Hold your peace and let God work miracles for you. Amen. Hold our peace and let God work miracles for us. Hold our peace. Don't be complaining. Don't look at the, the, the circumstance. Don't look at the mountain before you. Look over that mountain and say, I'm going right through that mountain. Amen. I'm going right through that storm and God is going to meet me. Amen. And God is going to help me through that storm. Amen. Amen. I got some uh, some scriptures that I want to that I want to sh uh, share of God's power. And we have to understand that God, the, the wind obeyed Jesus and the water obeyed Jesus. That's how powerful he is. And you know, this, it's a simple story, but it's a powerful story. And let's just be put back on track that in the midst of the storm, that Jesus is right there. He was with them in the boat. Amen. He wasn't out of the boat. He wasn't on dry land. He wasn't. He wasn't nowhere. He was with them. He said, come on, guys, let's go. Get in the boat. Let's go. Come on. Let's go with me to the boat so we can go to the other side. Right. And we have to understand that. Jesus says, come on. I'm here. I'm here. Come with me. I'm here. Come with me. I'm here. Come with me. And we come with him, but we still doubt. And we have fear. We unbelief. And we have anxiety. Why? Because we don't know what the end of the result is. We, all we do is see all the fear. All we do is see all the storm. The water was already coming up. And the boat was, could be tipping over and all that. And then that's where fear kicks in. And you're like, oh my gosh, I've never gone through this before. What in the world? How am I going to get through this? You're going to get through it because I am is with you. Amen. You're going to go through that storm and you're going to come out of it. And you're gonna, it's going to be a testimony to other people. And you're going to say, this is what I did. I was calm through the midst of the storm. Not because I did my, uh, I was positive thinking. Not because I did my yoga and I thought positive thoughts. It's because I applied the word of God to my life. It's because when I was going through the midst of the storm, let me tell you, I am was with me in the Amen. boat. Amen. When I went through that storm, I am was with me. Right. The King of kings and the Lord of lords is with me when I go into the midst of of that storm. And he's with me. And he's seen me through. You need to get Jesus in your boat. You need to get Jesus in your house. You need to get Jesus in your heart. You need to get Jesus. And when you're going through a storm, Jesus is going to make it way right, better. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Right. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise. He deserves the glory. But we, sometimes when we go through the midst of the storm, we forget how God, how God's power is so powerful. That his power is so great. And uh, 2 Chronicles 29, 11, it says, Yours, O Lord, is the greatness of the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For all that is in the heavens and in earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom. O Lord, you are 
exalted as head above all. And Matthew 19, 26, and it says, But Jesus looked at them, but Jesus looked at them, but Jesus looked at them and said, With man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Amen? Amen? But Jesus looked at them and said, With the man, this is impossible. We can't do nothing without God. We can't live, we can't breathe, we can't work, we can't raise children, we can't have a marriage, we can't have... We can't do anything without God. Right. We have to understand. But with God, all things are possible. Right. So when you're going through that midst of the storm, I can't do it, God, but you can. Right. All things are possible with you. You can right. do anything. You can calm this. If, if God, that, we have to understand that God is all powerful. That when God speaks to that wind, it obeys the King of Kings. When God speaks to that water and that wave, it obeyed Jesus Christ. Come on now. That's how powerful our God is. And we think that the devil's powerful. And we think we lift up the devil. And we say, oh, the devil this and the devil that. No, God this and God that. And God is my provider. And God is with me. And all things are possible with God. And God's the one that's going to take is in the midst of the storm with me. I am not by myself. Can you imagine the people that have to go through life without God? Can you imagine the trials and the tribulations that they have to go through without God? And we have God. Yeah, Amen? Right. But with God, all things are possible. In 1 Corinthians 6.14 it says, And God raised the Lord and he will also raise us up by His power. Amen? In 2 Timothy 1 7, it says, For God gave us a spirit, for God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and of love and of self control. Amen. God's all powerful. And Ephesians 3 20, it says, Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think according to the power at work within us. Amen. We have to understand that the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit is on the inside of us. We have to understand that Jesus said that we'll do greater things. We have to understand that God is all powerful. We lift up the, the devil too much. We need to lift up God. We need to know that God has everything under control. That God spoke to that water and told it to be quiet. That God spoke to that wind and told it to come and it come. That God is all powerful. And we think and, and we, our little tiny minds can't even comprehend it. Just said we can God wants to do great things in our life. God wants to manifest in this church. God wants to, to do great things for our families. God wants to do great things in our lives. And in our ministry. And we got great things to do. But we have to understand. The God's power that he's going to do it. And sometimes we don't think he's going to do it. Amen. Sometimes we think that. He, he's oh God. He's up there in heaven somewhere. And, and he, you know. He wants us to be down here on earth. And we have no power. Well we got to get God's power. Right. We got to know that God lives on the inside of us. And that God's power lives on the inside of us. And the disciples, and I don't want Jesus to say, uh, are you still without no faith? Right. Are you still without no confidence that I got this under control? Come on now, get it together. Right, and sometimes we fall and we're like, oh man. You know, sometimes we fall and we're like, oh man. And they're like, what am I doing down here? Shut up, devil, and get back up. You know what I mean? Just like right, that. Man. Sometimes yeah. we get down low sometimes. We get discouraged sometimes. We 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 say and we get worried or anxious or or fearful or whatever for a second or whatever. But we don't stay there. I don't stay there. Yeah. I get in God's word and I say, God, okay, you're gonna have to help me, Lord. You're gonna have to show me. You're gonna have to give me uh, help me. And He does because I don't go to anybody else but God. Amen. And neither should we. Amen. And we have to understand that God is is. Is all powerful. And it says Acts 1 8. It says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You have the power of God in our lives. And we have to understand that 
God's power wants to manifest in our lives just like Jesus did it. Jesus calmed the sea. Jesus did it. We can do it too. That great, awesome, the power that God is, is has for us. Philippians 4.13, it says, I can do all things uh, th uh, through him who strengthens me. We can do anything. We can go through the midst of the storm. We can go through this, uh, the trials in our lives. Because why? Because we can do all things through who? Not through ourselves, not through our jobs, not through not through our own hands, and not through our own ability, not through our own strength. But him who gives us strength. Amen. We can do it. We can do it. We got this. Everything's going to be all right. Amen. 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 It's Psalm 62, 11. It says, once God has spoken, twice have I heard this, that power belongs to God. Amen. Exodus 14, 14. The Lord will fight for you, you and you have only to be silent. The Lord will fight for you. God's got this. The Lord's fighting our battle. God's got it. We, we're winners in the in the long run. We stay focused. We stay. Don't get unfocused in the in the midst of the storm. We get unfocused and we think about, well, you know, this or that, or we think, you know, how is this? How is it going to come about? And you know, when is it going to come about? And 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 how come I'm going through this, Lord, and all that? Instead of just going through it, writing it. Right, just writing it. Don't be like the disciples. And if you you work for a second, then repent and get back up and say, "Okay, God, you're with me. You are with me." Uh, how can I sit there and say, "Where are you at?" How can I sit there and say, "God, how do you not care about me?" God cares about us. How can we sit there and say that? But we say that, right? We yeah. say that. I said that. You said that. The disciples said that. Do you not care about us? Do you not care about us, Lord? Do you not know what's going on in my life right now? Do you not care about, you know, my kids are on their way to hell? Do you not care? Do you not care about the city of Pueblo? Do you not care? Yes, he cares. He's got it. Amen. He's got it. Yeah. Yeah. We just got to go for it. We just got to just go through the midst of the storm. We just got to go through through this 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 storm. But God, Jesus isn't with us in the storm. He's with us. Right. Amen. And we have to understand that, that God is with us in that midst of the storm, that we don't have to have fear and we don't have to be afraid and we don't have to worry. And that's what the things were. Fearful. They were worried and they were, you know, they, they were upset. They were fearful. They were worried. They had anxiety. And that's what happens when you go through the midst of the storm. Boom, that hits you. And you're like, what? What? I thought I got rid of this stuff. Yeah. I thought I, right. you know, I was all this right, man. powerful woman of God, man of God, and and I thought I I thought oh we we'll, we we'll take down the Goliaths, <laughs> and then that and then and then you go through the storm, and you're going through it, and all of a sudden this fear and the worry and in, in your mind. Yeah. That's why we the the. Our mind. We have to renew our mind every day with the Word of God. We got to renew our mind. The the when you read the Word, it's washing your mind. When you yeah. read the Word, it's yeah. washing your mind. And you got to not only read the Word, but you got to apply it to your life. Right. And that's what Jesus is saying. How many miracles have you saw? How many things have you saw me do? And you're still saying, and you're still talking smack over here. <laughs> you're still telling me, how could I not? How could I not? Uh, don't you not care? How could you sit there and say, how could I not care about you? Amen. I've cared about you your whole life. Yeah. About you your whole life. Right. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of fear, the death, I fear no evil because you're with me. God walked. God carried us. Yeah. God carried us through yeah. the storms yeah. of life. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The footprints in the sand. He was carrying. There's only one set. How come, how come it's only me? Lord, how come it's only me? No, God was carrying us through that storm. He was carrying us, holding us. He cares about us. He loves us. He has our best interest at heart. We're his sons and his daughters. He's not going to let us drown. He's not going to let the devil win. He, he, we're victorious. He's not going to let the devil win. He's not going to let us drown. And that's why I get so upset with some of my grandkids because they said, 
I got scared that you left me. I'm like, I, you're, 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 you're my pride and choice, kid. <laughs> why, why would you think that? Why would you think that Nana's gonna leave you? Why would you think that Rana's gonna leave you? I would never leave you. I just went around the corner, but you, right away when you don't see, you don't see your Nana or you don't see somebody, then you don't see God. And right away you're just like, oh my gosh, God, where are you at? I'm not right here. And I got, I got, get a sense sometimes because they, they think, I say, you really think that I would leave you? I would never leave you. I love you. I would never leave you. I'm here. I'm not going to let you drown. Amen. And these kids, the, the, the little babies, they, you know, I want to have faith just like them because when they wake up, I'm hungry and they just know that cereal and milk. You know, I want to eat. And oh, okay. Well, what do you want to eat today? You know, you know, and and you're like, you know, they're not worried. The little kids are not worried. They got they 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 just have enough faith to believe that mom and dad, you know, got food for them, and 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 you know, they're gonna, they're just gonna. They're, uh, how am I gonna pay the little water bill today? You know, am I gonna have water so I can take a shower today? You know, they don't worry. But us as adults, we we worry and, and and we can't. And I think God gets a little bit upset, like He did in that scripture. Like, man, haven't you got it yet? Yeah. Don't you got it? I'm with you. I'm not. I'm in the midst. I'm writing this with you. I told you that I would never leave you. Why are you saying where are you at? I'm right here. And that's why. And that's when the peace of God comes over you and says, "I know God, forgive me. I'm sorry." I lost it for a minute. Try again. I lost it for a minute, God. Yeah. Forgive me, I'm sorry. I'm looking at this. I'm looking at all the big old problems, and I'm not looking to my great big God because right. God is bigger than the problem. Right, man. God is bigger than the boogeyman. Right. That's what the song says. Right. God is bigger than that. God is bigger than the devil. Right. The right. devil thinks that he's gonna win. He's got another thing coming. He's not right. gonna win. Right. God is greater than that. We have the victory. God has got this battle that that we're going through, and we're going to go overcome. I don't know when, I don't know how, but God's got it. And the devil says, "Oh, you're going to drown, or or you're going to die, or you know, you're going to die, and never going to see your kids saved, or your kids are going to die in their sin and all that." No, God, you got this. The devil is a liar. Right. And when you're going through this storm, you get head trips, and you get fearful, and you get anxiety, and you get you know, you get upset, but you know what? It's God's got this, right. and God will rebuke us, yeah. and God will show show you. And that's what I, you know, you have to tell you when when the grandkids say, "I oh, thought you left me," and I said, "I'm right here." I just went to the restroom. Do you can't I go to the restroom? But uh, I, uh, you know, and I get upset because I'm like, why would they think that I would leave them? I would never leave them, you know. And I think that's the way God is. He gets he gets a little bit upset with the with, with us and says, you know, I'm here. I'm right here. I've never left you. I'm with you. Don't be like that. Yeah. Know that I, you know, haven't you got it already? And we need to get it because there are going to be more bigger storms and there's going to be more, more situations coming in our lives. And we got to understand that God is bigger and God's not going to let us drown. Right. He's not going to let us, he's not going to, he's not going to let us fail. He's not going to let us go. We might fall, but he's going to pick us up. Right. He's going to dust us off like yeah. we do our kids and our grandkids, and we help them. And we say, oh, okay, and they're like, I got a boo-boo. I got a right, hope. That's what you think. I got a boo-boo. I got a boo-boo. And I'm like, okay, let me kiss your boo-boo. So I kiss your boo-boo. I got a boo-boo. And I'm saying, God, I got a boo-boo. Come and help me. He's not going to let us fail. He's not going to let me drown. He's not going to let this ministry go. He's not going to do that. He's not going to let our families not serve the Lord. He's going to do something great in, 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 in our family. It's, wow. you know, our family is called, and I know your family is called, our family is called, and the devil comes to, to kill, to steal, and destroy, but my God is greater than that. My son-in-law is my son. My daughter's God. God we have a calling on our lives. And the devil's mad right now, but I don't care. I know God is greater than that, and I know my family's going to serve the Lord. And we, we're, when you come into our family, I don't know if our son-in-laws know that, but when they come into our family, they're called, they're chosen by. Uh, what do you think, God? Just you know, God, just that just happened. No, God knew. 
God knows. And God knows that our family is called and is chosen to do great things for God. And when we're gone, they're going to do great things. They're going to take over. And God, God has everything under control. And the devil's a liar and he's mad and he's trying to, trying to, I don't know what he's trying to do, but he's not going to win. He's not going to win because God is greater and God is in the midst of a storm. We have to go through hard times. Yeah. And sometimes it's, it's not easy because it doesn't feel good when you're going through hard times. And, it, and it's not all, like Pastor Ben said, peaches and creams and, it, and it's, not, it's not like that. But God, God has a calling on our lives. And I don't know when and I don't know how, but he's going to do something great in my family. Amen. He fights us all the way, he fights us all the way, all the way. It doesn't matter if it's in Washington or if it's in the South or if it's here in Pueblo. He fights us, but he's not going to win. He's not because he's not going to let us drown. He's not going to let us fail. He didn't bring us this far to let us drown. He didn't bring us this far to let us burn. He did it. I wouldn't do that to my own children, and he wouldn't do that to us. He wouldn't, Pastor Vince. God, God is in the midst of the storm, and he's, he's in our family, and he's in our boat. And we have to understand that he's going to calm the storm. We just got to write it. We just got to write it out. And he's, and he's going to do great things for us. And, and, and the end of the year, and the beginning of the year, I don't know what the future holds, but I know who holds the future. Amen. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, what's going to happen next month, or what's going to happen, but I know that God has everything under control, and we don't have to be anxious. And sometimes we do get anxious. I do. I'm a person. Sometimes I get mad. I'm a person. Sometimes I get hurt. I'm a person. But God's got this, and he's, he, he said, I'll read the scripture one more time. Second Chronicles 2015. And he said, Hearken ye all Judea and all inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat, thus said the Lord unto you, Be not afraid or dismayed, by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but it's God's. Amen. Amen. The battle is not yours, but it's God's. Amen. It's God's battle. It's God's battle. And he's in the midst of the storm. And if we love our children, even if they do wrong or even if they, you know, do something wrong or whatever, we still love our kids. Right. Amen. Right. And God's got the best for us. We don't have to worry because he's in the boat. And Jesus might be relaxing. And he, or he might be sleeping, but he's there. Yeah. He's there. Yeah. He hasn't left us and he'll never leave us right. or never forsake us. He'll always be there. We might, be go, we might go through hard times hard times but he's he's there with us and we don't need to be afraid and i think this message was for me because you do get you do get um <coughs> afraid and you do you get you get worried but you have to i have to understand and we all have to understand that he's with us that we have to have faith and confidence that he's with us. Amen. Let's all stand. Did you want to say anything, Pastor Nick? You want to come to the piano, Pastor Naomi, so we can go out with a worship song? I was trying to think of one. Father God, we just thank you, God, tonight. We thank you, God, that you are in our boat tonight. You are in our home. You are in our lives. We, we're so grateful, God, because we can't do it without you. We thank you that you're here with us right now. And you are going to make the wind calm and the sea be still, God. You are. 
and you are going to fight the battle. And we, it's, this is your battle, God. It's not ours. We only have to be still and know that you are God. We don't have to be afraid. We don't have to be dismayed because you're with us, God. And we thank you, God, tonight that you love us so much, God, that you're not going to let us drown, that you're not going to let us fail, that you're not going to let us, God, go without, God, but that you're going to be with us in the midst of our storms. Whether it be our family, whether it be our marriage, whether it be our kids get not saved, or whether it be our family not saved, or our city, or whatever storm in life we're going through. Maybe it's physically, our physical bodies, or if it's financially, God. We're going to ride through this storm with you, Jesus. We're going to not lose focus. We're going to not lose our eyes on you, God, because you are the author and the finisher of our faith. We put our eyes on you. You are the author and the finisher of our faith. You are the I am. The I am is in the boat with you. The I am is in the boat with us tonight. Can you say that out of your mouth? The I am is with me in the boat. The I am is with me in the storm. You are so good to us, God. You are so good to us. And we love you tonight and we honor you, God, tonight. And we're so grateful. We're so grateful as the world celebrates Thanksgiving and we celebrate giving thanks to our God. We're so grateful tonight that you are in our lives for a reason. You saved us to save our children and our grandchildren and our friends and our families and our city. You saved us for a reason, God. We're so grateful. That Pastor Vince did 30, how many years? Five, four, 34 years, God. And he's still standing today after 34 years, God. We thank you for this man of God that stands, God, through the midst of the storms of his life. And he's still standing, God. Thank you, Lord. You're so good to us. You're so good, God. That he never quit and gave up on 